Hi there, I want to make a quick video about doing some CSS transitions and it's an effect that you see quite often on websites. What I have here are three cards and what I want to do with them is I want to make them all the same height so they're all the same size and then this purple part I want to hide most of it. I'll leave a little bit of the purple sticking out the top but for the most part it's going to look like green, white, green, white, green, white with this little purple stripe at the bottom but when you mouse over to hover over the card this area, the purple, is going to slide up and cover up part of the text here. So we can uh, adjust. I've already used Display Flex to make these into things that will automatically move around and space themselves out nicely on the page. Okay, so the HTML, we have three divs with the class card. Now this isn't a reserve name or anything, this is just the name that I picked. My main element wraps around all three of them. It's got the class cards. So I've got some CSS on this. I've got some CSS on the individual cards. There's a header, a div for the content, and a div for the little purple section. So the content is the main text in the middle, and the reveal, what I'm calling the reveal, is the little section at the bottom with the purple background that's going to slide up onto the page. So let's take a look and see what we've got in here cards. That was the container for all three of them. Display flex, flex wrap, so it automatically comes down if there's too many to fit on the row, one will drop down to the next. Um, I line them towards the uh, top and space them out evenly across the width. Um, put some padding around just to make sure the cards don't touch the top, bottom, left, or right of anything else. The individual cards. They have the flex property. I'm saying I don't want them to grow or shrink and I want them all to be 200 pixels wide. That's my default width for all of them. Border, margin top. Uh, I've got a border, it's a, just a slight line at the bottom of the green sections here. The H2, I've got the font size, some padding on the top, bottom left and right. A um, little bit of a text shadow, just a faint effect on it. Background color is the green. The content section with the text, it's got a font size, a little bit of padding on the top, bottom, left, and right. The reveal section has got the purple background, white text, font size padding. So there's nothing really surprising about anything that's being displayed in here. Zoom in a little bit more to see those. Now, I want to make these things the same height, these cards the same height. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to set a fixed height on the header and a fixed height on the container and then add those two together to give me the height that I want for the entire card. So how do we figure this out? I'm not using pixels for any sizes in here. I'm using REMs. and That's fine. I can use REMs for heights on these elements too. So let's start with the header. Now I'm using box sizing set to border box with zero padding and margin on absolutely everything on the page. So there's no padding or margin unless I put it there. I want to make sure that this doesn't affect any sizes or calculations that I make. So the header itself has nothing except for this border on the bottom. The H2 inside of it, it's going to take up the whole thing. An H2 element is display block, which means it's going to fill up the width and it's going to have whatever height I give it. The default line height on my page up in the HTML element is 1.5. So 1.5 times whatever the font size is. I'm setting it to be 1.4 REM. So if I take 1.4 REM, and uh, oh, I've been playing with this a little bit, I've got different sizes here. So if I take 1.4 REM and I multiply that times 1.5, so that's half again here, this makes this 2.1. REM is 1.5 times this. Then we add the padding on the top and bottom, 1.5. So 1.5, 1. or sorry, 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.5 becomes one. One added onto here, this whole thing becomes 3.1 REM. There's only one line of text, so that is our height. We've got 3.1 REMs. I look, visually it didn't really change. We've got, it looks pretty much the same because 
That's what it was. I'm just hard coding it to be that. I'm saying it's got to be explicitly 3.1 REM. Now the content, same thing. 0.8 REMs, that's my height, times 1.5 gives me the line height. 1.5 times this is 1.2. Multiply that by 3 because I'm going to say there's going to be three lines of text. I'm just going to make that a standard. I'll hold up to three lines of text. 3 times my 1.2 gives me 3.6, and then I add the padding. Another 1 REM brings me up to 4.6. So I have 4.6 and 3.1. I'll just hard code this in at 4.6 REM. Now if I ever make an adjustment to the padding or the font size or the line height, I'm going to have to rework these numbers, but for now, this is what I want to do. 3.1, 4.6, add them together, we've got 7.7. I'll go up to my card, 7.7 REM, that is the total of these things added together. Now I know I've got a, uh, a border on the top and bottom as well, that's going to add an extra pixel, There's the header has that extra pixel in there, so I'm just going to round this up very slightly, I'm going to say 7.8 REM. All right. Again, no difference. But if you look closely, you'll see that the border, look over here, you can see the border is ending right around here. That's the height we want. So in addition to, sorry, I didn't even set the height property, I just wrote 7.8. There we are. So it's cutting it off here, it's cutting it off here, it's cutting it off here. I need to hide this. This stuff is spilling out, the purple is spilling out. So, overflow, set to hidden. That will hide anything that is beyond here. Now I did say that I wanted to have a little bit of purple sticking out. So let's bump this up. Let's say 8.0 REM. We're adding an extra 0.2 REMs. There's the purple sticking up. We can bump this up a little bit more, 8.1. Yeah, that looks okay. So you can play with this number, decide how much that you want to reveal. Now I've got that purple across the bottom. That's the part that I'm going to make slide in and appear. My reveal. Here it is, this section. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take its height, times 1.5, times three lines of text, plus the padding. It comes out to 3.7 REMs. So I will hard code that height at 3.7 REM. And if I want to push it up a little bit more, I can do that, but I don't want to interfere with this text. If I do push this thing up a little bit more, I want to make sure I keep some padding between this text here so I can increase the height on the content. I come into the content and I say, okay, I'm going to add 0.2 REMs onto the content. That means my total height needs another 0.2. There we are. So this is still working out to be the height of those things combined. This 3.7, I'm not going to change the height, but what I am going to do is I'm going to add a transform. And I'm going to slide this upwards, negative 0.2 REM. That will move it up, the extra 0.2 that I provided space for here. There we go. So this is now pushed up slightly, and I haven't cut into the padding that was here. Now for the hover effect. This is how we're going to make the magic happen. When I move over this, we've got the cards. They're lined up. They're the same size. You can see they're all the same height. Great. I've still got the good padding. I've still got the proper line height. I've got a little bit of this revealed. When I hover over it, well, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do a a shadow effect on the card first of all. I'll start with that one. So we'll say box shadow. By default, nothing. There we have nothing showing up here. So I've got this gray, yeah great my Dropbox is full. We've got this gray color and or partially transparent black and no blur, no X, no Y uh, displacement, so the shadow is not going to show up. 
but I'm going to make that shadow move when I hover over the card. So let's add a transform to say box shadow. And it will take 0.5 seconds and do a linear transform. So if I change the values of this in half a second, it'll change from this to the new values. Come down here. Now let's change these to 4 pixel, 4 pixel, 4 pixel. There we are. So my shadows are appearing now. And a transform. Oh, sorry, it's not a transform, it's a transition. That's what it's going to be. And I'm going to say all in case there's something else that I want to change. There we go. Now I'm getting the shadow effect. So you can see it takes that half second to go from one to the other. And then it gradually slides back too. So, nice effect on the card. But we still need to reveal that purple part. So we'll come down to the bottom here for the reveal on the hover. And what we're going to do is change this. We're going to, instead of being negative 0.2 REMs, we had a height of 3.7. So let's make it negative. 3.7 or 3.6 or 3.8, something like that. Along those lines, we can decide what we want to do, how much we can adjust it after the fact. So this is a sudden blink like that. Okay, I'm not going to, I don't want to have the white at the bottom I'm deciding, so I'm going to make this uh, 3.5 instead. There we go. I like that better but I want to have it gradually move just like the shadows have sliding in. So come up here and CSS transition. Transition and it's the transform that we're changing and the transform is going to take 0. Point, let's say 4 seconds and it'll be an ease. And there we are. There we have the effect. So we've got the shadow effect working on the cards. We've got the little reveal card coming in from the bottom. And all it took was a little bit of hard coding of the heights, making proper calculations to make sure that we had the right height. And then the hover effect starting the transition. All right. I think I have to go and let my dog out. So I hope this has helped you. And as always, thanks for watching.